The Panama Canal moves over 500 billion tons of cargo every year. Ships pay up to half a million dollars just to pass through. It's one of the most important waterways on Earth. But what if I told you that right now, another country's planning something even bigger? A $50 billion mega project that would transform global shipping forever. A canal so massive, it could handle ships too big for Panama. Who would dare compete with this? For centuries, Nicaragua's been trying to build it. They faced volcanoes, civil wars, and even plans involving nuclear bombs. But they're still not giving up. This is how the most ambitious infrastructure project in Central American history came to be, Nicaragua's rival to the Panama Canal. Every year, more than 10,000 ships make their way through the Panama Canal. These vessels carry an astounding half a billion tons of cargo, making it one of the most crucial waterways in the world. For shipping companies, paying up to half a million dollars in toll fees is simply the cost of doing business. Why? because the alternative is the notorious Strait of Magellan, one of the most dangerous stretches of water on Earth. Ships attempting this route face violent storms, treacherous winds, and massive waves that can capsize vessels. It's a risk few companies are willing to take. But the Panama Canal isn't perfect. In recent years, it started showing its limitations. With global trade expanding rapidly, ships often find themselves stuck in queues, waiting for their turn to pass through. But here's the real problem. The canal is literally too small for modern shipping. Think of it like trying to fit a modern SUV through a garage built for a Model T Ford. The biggest ships the canal can handle, known as Panamax vessels, are about 50 meters wide. Meanwhile, modern megaships, like the massive Irina-class vessels, span 60 meters across. These growing pains haven't gone unnoticed, especially by Nicaragua. Let's rewind to the 1500s. When the story of Nicaragua's canal ambitions began, Spain controlled much of the Americas, extracting vast amounts of silver and gold from conquered territories like the Aztec and Inca empires. They needed an efficient way to transport these treasures back to Europe. Without the Panama Canal, which wouldn't exist for centuries, they relied on a complex system of mule trains to move goods across Central America between two separate fleets of ships. The Spanish weren't blind to the obvious. A canal could revolutionize their empire. Back in 1551, they sent surveyors to map out potential routes. Their verdict? Two promising paths. One cutting through Panama, and another slicing through Nicaragua. But when they saw the price tag, the Spanish crown quickly changed its tune. In the end, they decided their faithful mule trains weren't so bad after all. Now let's jump to the 19th century, when everything changed. Spain was caught up in a messy war with France, and their American colonies saw their chance. While the Spanish crown was distracted, these territories broke free and formed something new, the Federal Republic of Central America. And guess what was at the top of their agenda? That's right, the canal. But this wasn't just about moving ships from one ocean to another. For this ambitious young nation, building a canal meant announcing their arrival on the world stage. It was their shot at transforming from a former colony into a global powerhouse. The Republic chose Nicaragua for their canal, planning to utilize the San Juan River and Lake Nicaragua. Ships would travel up the river, cross the lake, and then pass through a short canal section to reach the Pacific. There was just one problem – money. The newly independent nation couldn't afford such an ambitious project without foreign investment. So they turned to the United States, another former colony that stood to benefit from easier access between the Atlantic and Pacific. Initially, the U.S. declined worried about the Republic's stability. Their concerns proved valid when civil war soon split the Republic into smaller nations, including Nicaragua. But Nicaragua didn't give up. The new government approached the U.S. again, and this time, America showed serious interest. By the late 1800s, the U.S. House of Representatives had established the Nicaraguan Canal Commission. Their surveys estimated the project would cost around $140 million, equivalent to about $5 billion today. Then came a twist that would change everything. While negotiating with Nicaragua, the U.S. was also in talks with France about their struggling Panama Canal project. The French, facing mounting costs and technical challenges, offered to sell their work in progress for $40 million. This included preliminary clearing, basic excavation, and established infrastructure. While American politicians were leaning toward Nicaragua, the French knew exactly how to change their minds. Their weapon of choice? a volcano. 
They flooded Washington with images of Nicaragua's Mount Mamatombo spewing lava and ash. Suddenly, every congressman's mailbox was stuffed with pamphlets showing this terrifying eruption. They even printed stamps, because nothing says, don't build here like a volcano on your mail. And you know what? It worked like a charm. In 1902, Congress took one look at those smoking mountains and said, yeah, let's build in Panama instead. But the dream of a Nicaragua canal refused to die. The route through Nicaragua offered a shorter path for ships traveling between America's east and west coasts, making it perpetually attractive to U.S. interests. In the 1960s, the project resurfaced as part of one of the most bizarre proposals in American history, Operation Plowshare. The plan? Use nuclear bombs to dig the canal. Yes, your ears heard that correctly. The U.S. seriously considered using nuclear explosions for excavation, claiming it would be 10 times cheaper than traditional methods. Fortunately, this nuclear option never materialized. The decades that followed saw various attempts to revive the project. Russia made a proposal but backed out due to costs. The UAE showed interest but ultimately walked away. Then in 2012, an unexpected player entered the game, Wang Jing. Before 2012, few people had heard of Wang Jing a Chinese businessman who claimed to have lived a very ordinary life. Starting with mining operations in Cambodia, he had quietly built his wealth. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, Nicaragua announced a deal with his Hong Kong Nicaragua Development Group to finally build the long-awaited canal. The world did a double-take. Who was this guy? Here's someone who'd never built so much as a bridge, suddenly planning to construct one of the biggest engineering projects in history. Things got even more suspicious when people discovered he was buddies with the Nicaraguan president's son. And sure, the $50 billion price tag. Wang Jing was rich, but not that rich. No wonder everyone started asking the obvious question. Was this really a solo project, or was the Chinese government pulling the strings behind the scenes? Wang Jing insisted he was working alone, but come on, something didn't add up. Despite all this, Wang Jing moved forward with ambitious plans. His proposal called for a new canal to be built from Nicaragua's east coast to Lake Nicaragua, followed by a smaller canal to the Pacific. The project would require both dry excavation and dredging of Lake Nicaragua to accommodate large ships. That would create 278 kilometers of canal, 50,000 workers, and a five-year construction timeline. Most importantly, the canal would be wider and deeper than Panama's, capable of handling the world's largest ships. Construction officially began in 2014, with Wang Jing himself attending the opening ceremony. Nicaragua's government was over the moon. Their GDP was about to double, but not everyone was celebrating. By 2015, the streets were filled with angry protesters, and they had a point. This mega project would slice through rainforests, threaten endangered wildlife, and might even contaminate Lake Nicaragua. The country's main source of freshwater the price of progress was starting to look pretty steep. Then it all fell apart. The Chinese stock market crashed in 2015, and Wang Jing watched $9 billion vanish in just four months. Game over. By 2018, his company had ghosted Nicaragua completely. Empty offices, dead website, no trace left behind. Fast forward to 2024, and Nicaragua finally kicked Wang Jing to the curb but they immediately created a new Great Canal Authority. Six government officials with one mission, keep the dream alive. This brings us to today. Will this massive canal ever get built? The odds look pretty bad. The price tag is astronomical. The engineering challenges are massive, and environmentalists are ready for a fight. But Nicaragua is not giving up. Not yet, anyway. We'll see. But for now, keep an eye on Visionary, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when it's all set. Until next time,